reason I love my job is every day there's something really fascinating. A patient came in not too long ago, and I think it was one of my first long haulers. Uh, this is, these are patients that have had uh, either COVID or some exposure to the spike protein at some point. They develop a few weeks later, often after having recovered from the virus itself, a syndrome where they're profoundly fatigued. Their brain doesn't work. They have a brain fog. They can hardly stay awake during the day. They can't walk very far. They have no endurance. I've heard it even described by them, which is very difficult for those of us who have not experienced this to even understand, but they'll be speaking and there's a delay of processing that is just micro or nanoseconds later. It feels like they're hearing themselves talk. Uh, it's even described as, I'm feeling like I'm talking when I'm drunk. I'm trying to uh, hope that I'm saying the right thing and hearing my voice. So there's this delay of processing. There's a delay of movement. There's even a delay of hearing. This brain and processing deficit has to happen after this exposure to the spike protein. So we know that the spike protein itself, the spike is inflammatory on the cells. Uh, Bruce Patterson out in Palo Alto has been doing some research, he's a pathologist, and his theoretical mechanism is that the spike inhabits these monocytes, which are precursors for macrophages, which is part of our immune system, and nothing is inside these monocytes except the spike protein. And these monocytes lock onto the walls of the vessels. So we have inflammatory changes in the vascular tree. His treatment plan is to suppress the inflammation and also try to decrease the free radical destruction of the cells involved and try to get rid of the monocytes. But we also know that the free radicals that are generated by the spike protein damaging cells is important. We got, I got a call from a doctor out in Los Angeles and he has a long hauler and his problem has been that he has a lipid peroxidation. In other words, the cell membrane is beginning to get oxidized and it's destroyed. And it's the free radicals, the inflammation of the spike that's destroying the cell membrane. When the cell membrane of all of our cells begins to deteriorate, then you get leakage out of the cell of all the things that are supposed to be inside the cell. And all of those are free radicals, so they begin to destroy more cells and more cells. And so it's a propagating chain reaction. What I've been doing with these patients is uh, to try to, number one, scavenge all these free radicals to prevent them from, from doing more cellular damage and the peroxidation of the membrane. Uh, if I can do that, then I can stop these uh, phospholipids, which is what the membrane's made of, from uh, deteriorating into arachidonic acid for the scientists among us. That then is the precursor for prostaglandins, leucotrienes, and all the inflammatory cascade that comes off of that. That's important to know because this is not just simple inflammation like a, a, an inflamed joint. This is a cascade of events that we want to rein in. If we can stop the free radical attack of the membrane, we can stop the lipid peroxidation, we can stop the arachidonic acid, and we can stop the prostaglandin inflammatory cascade. The fact that we know what's going on gives us a clue as to what to do next. And in my protocol that's included in this compound is uh, CoQ10, carnitine, alpha lipoic acid. All of these are free radical scavengers, so they're all antioxidant activities. They're also anti-inflammatory to rein in a lot of the inflammation that's precipitated by this uh, long hauler syndrome. One of the other things that I try to do is to uh, repair the damage that's done. So the cell membrane is made of these phospholipids and scientists and doctors know this, they learned it in med school, whether they remember it or not, this is the time to bring that back up to your head. Part of the repair mechanisms in my protocol includes these phospholipids. Now I'm giving the raw material to repair the membrane. I'm stopping the damage process, I'm giving back what repairs. These phospholipids, phosphatylcholine, phosphatylinositol, phosphatylethanolamine, all of those things now are there to be used in the repair process. So what have been my results? Well, within a week or two, after having suffered with it for several months, sometimes a year and a half in some cases, they're completely different people. 
the fatigue begins to lift, their brain begins to work. We've demonstrated this slowing of processing in these patients using the WAVI EEG protocol that we use from the University of Colorado. And it has been invaluable to show that the processing delay is beyond significant. And you know what comes to mind when I hear these stories is it's like a rewind and replay of patients that come in complaining of Lyme disease. Long after the Lyme disease bacteria or pathogen is gone, they have these residual symptoms that just persist for years. And everybody kind of blows them off or you're malingering. But this is exactly the same type of syndrome. What's left behind after the pathogen, the virus in this case, has done its job, well, now we need to repair. And what we're finding is we can repair that. And even Bruce Patterson says, I wonder if this is similar to Lyme disease. And I wonder if these same uh, protocols where we decrease the free radicals, we, de we drop the inflammation down. I wonder if they would also work in these patients that have been suffering from this post-Lyme syndrome. And how many others are there like that? So that's what we're dealing with with, uh, with these post-COVID patients. And there's more and more of them. And I think there needs to be a, an increasing awareness. That's what I want to see happen. Because I think there's hope for these guys. I know we've been able to turn around some of them and uh, the ones that we've had. And I'm excited about that.